Hi guys, today we're going to learn about trends, which are on the periodic table. If you forgot, trends is another word for patterns. And so these are some more of the secret things hidden on the periodic table for you to know. So there's two new little words we're going to learn today. They are electronegativity. Electronegativity is really long, so I like to abbreviate it with an EN. It's the ability of an atom to attract electrons in a chemical bond, because that's what's going on. Electronegativity can be ranked on a scale from 0 to 4. 0 means, oops, I don't want that line, 0 means that there is no attraction for electrons. It can't get any electrons. 4 means that it's the highest possible attraction for electrons. And so there's a pattern for the periodic table for you to know where 0 is and where 4 is. There's also another new word that is called ionization energy. Again, you can abbreviate that. That's very long, so if you want to write it IE, that's okay. This means the amount of energy required to remove an atom or an electron from an atom. So, the good news is that both of these words have the same trend. They've got the same pattern on the periodic table. So, we're going to talk about what that pattern is. So, if we're talking across a period, remember a period means a row this way. So, we always go left to right. So, going left to right, both electronegativity and ionization energy increase. So, let's talk about the why. If we think about our periodic table, the atoms are closer to having an octet. An octet means that every atom wants to have eight valence electrons. You know the number of valence electrons based on the group. So this has one, everything here has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So those are the valence electrons in case you forgot that trend. And so what that means is electronegativity the, there's a higher attraction for electrons to so get an octet. So over here, these, elect or these atoms only have one or two electrons. They need six or seven more, so it's really hard for them to get to an octet. But as we go across, they get closer and closer to having the eight electrons that they want. So their electronegativity will increase. Now, if we think about ionization energy, if you already have seven valence electrons, you don't want to lose any and go backwards. That's going to make it harder for you to get an octet. So if you're already really, really close, your ionization energy will be closer and higher because you're closer to having an octet. All right, another possible pattern is going up and down a group. Remember, a group goes like this in a column. And so ionization energy and electronegativity, top to bottom, they both decrease. The reason why is that bigger atoms have more electrons, and this gets in the way of what's going on. So if you think about your atom that looks like this, let me get my pen. It's hard to elect, attract electrons in electronegativity. The nucleus already has so many of these energy levels that it's really hard for this nucleus buried in the middle to do anything and pull more electrons to it. There's already so much other stuff in the way. Similar for electronegativity, it's hard for electron or for or the nucleus to hold on to electrons floating way out here. It's so far away from the nucleus that there's a lot of other energy levels in the way. And so that ionization energy decreases because of the extra energy levels that are in the way. So you already learned another trend. Remember the snowman? That was for atomic radius. And so this is different. These trends for electronegativity and ionization energy are the opposite of the snowman. And so here's the way that you can think of it. Here's your snowman over here. And remember, sometimes your snowman falls down like this, and so it's opposite. The highest electronegativity and ionization energy is fluorine. And so think about it as F for fire. Fire is the opposite of your snowman. So these two patterns are the opposite of each other. Okay? So let's see if we can use this to help ourselves do some of these questions. Let's get this so I can see it. Okay, so if we want to put these in order from least to most electronegative, we want to start far from fluorine and get close 
to fluorine because fluorine is the highest. So if I compare these first elements for A, they are here, here, here. And so the farthest away is Fe. If we get a little bit closer, it's CO and then Ni. That's increasing electronegativity. Okay, let's try another one. If I compare K and Na and Cs, I want to start far away. Here's fluorine right here. Farthest away is Cs, so that has the lowest electronegativity. Get a little bit closer, you're at K, and the closest is Na. So you're starting far, getting close. It's all about fluorine. Okay, if I look at the next ones, I have Na, and then I have Mg, and then I have Al. So again, the farthest away from fluorine is Na, and then Mg, and the closest is Al. That has the highest electronegativity. And the last example, we've got arsenic over here, we've got potassium over here, and calcium. If we want to start with the least electronegative, we want to go farthest away from fluorine. So K is farthest away, and then CA, and the closest is AS. All right, so here's the trick to this. Electronegativity and ionization energy are the same. So all of these patterns that we just wrote up here will be exactly the same for ionization energy. The patterns are identical. So that makes the question number two very, very easy. All right, let's try some more. So when we have an atom undergo ionization, Ionization means ionization energy, and so if you go back up to your definition, ionization energy is removing an electron. Removing is the same as losing an electron, and if you remember oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. If we are losing an electron, it is oxidation, and that process of loss creates a cation. Okay? And we just said cations become positive because they undergo oxidation. They lose electrons, okay? So the one thing that we didn't talk about was if fluorine is the highest, there's still this entire group of noble gases over here, and we ignore them. So for question number four, group 18, the noble gases get ignored. The reason why is the octet rule means that atoms want to have eight valence electrons. But the noble gases already have this. Oops, I forgot to cross my T. Since noble gases have the full octet, they have their eight valence electrons. They don't do any oxidation. They don't do any reduction. So they don't use ionization energy or electronegativity. They don't gain or lose any electrons. They don't care. They have their full octet and they are happy. Okay? All right, let's grab our periodic table. Couple more questions with this pattern. So I want to know which group has the lowest ionization energy. So I want to compare this to this group. But remember, we're going to cross off the noble gases, so I'm going to compare these two. If fluorine is the highest, way over here would be the lowest. So group one, which are also called the alkali metals. Now, if I want to compare the period Remember, those are the rows. If this is our highest, then lowest is going to be way down here at the bottom, and that would be period 7. Okay. Again, ionization energy and electronegativity are the same pattern. So that means, oh no, 
that these answers here that we wrote for questions 7 and 8 will be the same lowest electronegativity is same as the lowest ionization energy group 1 and period 7 okay so now what we want to do is we want to put this all together so atomic radius is all about the snowman sometimes he falls down electronegativity and ionization energy are all about fluorine. These two trends are opposite of each other. Right? So for atomic radius, what that means is the highest or the biggest is in the bottom left of the periodic table. For electronegativity and ionization energy, the highest or the biggest is in the top right, except for the noble gases, so really that means fluorine. All right, let's see how you did. There are some questions on the next page if you want to do a little bit of practice, or you can come ask me for some help.